This is the Suplex Assassin, Alex Kane, your MLW National Open Weight Champion, and you are listening to Wrestling Cheer. Taking your way in the world today takes everything you got. Taking a break from all your worries sure would help a lot. Wouldn't you like to get away? Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. And welcome back to Wrestling Cheers, where everybody knows your name, especially when you're the suplex assassin. This is Wrestling Cheers. We like to talk about things on the Northeast Ohio independent wrestling scene. We preview shows, we review shows, and sometimes we even have interviews along the way. This is an interview with Alex Kane, and this is, will be the first of our two Black History Month slash Black Wrestlers Matter interviews. I'm your host, Justin Summers, and Wrestling Cheers is brought to you by the Trending Topics Network and Midwest Territory. Please rate, review, and subscribe your ever list as fine podcasts, whether it be Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, YouTube, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, Amazon Music, or Podbean, WrestlingCheers.Podbean.com. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, Facebook.com slash Wrestling Cheers, Twitter.com slash Wrestling Cheers, and Instagram.com slash wrestling cheers email if you so choose to desire wrestling cheers at gmail.com and we have the merch store over at whatamaneuver.net like i said this is an interview with alex kane and we have alex kane on the line right now how's it going this evening it is going great i am amazing um i am i'm hyped up and i'm ready to get this interview correct uh, I, th- I think now uh, when i look at the mlw roster you might be my current favorite seeing how uh a local uh, is no longer with the company. Yes. That's what I want. <laughs> I'm trying to become everybody's favorite in MOW. I want, I want, I want me being on that roster for that for be the reason why you watch MLW. Yeah, and like, like I love team filthy, but like they're all gone now. And mm-hmm. I always like, I got to support Dom and, and violence is forever. And then there was that brief synth that Lee was there, but now like all my favorites are gone. My previous well, favorites, yeah. but there's you. Yeah, Lee. Lee was like a lot of people always ask. Like, oh, I thought Lee was Lee was not signed to MLW. Lee came in for some dates. That's okay. it. Just came with some dates, show his face, do some things or whatever. And I feel like um, was, it was Lee, Bobby Fish, um, Warhorse, um, definitely a few others. But I feel like I mean Lee was Lee was getting signed by by somebody at some point. Mm-hmm. Period. But I do feel like people you have been using MOW as kind of like a launch, not either like a launching pad or like a stepping stone or whatever, just to get like some like extra eyes on them, which is which is dope as hell for me to me. Because uh, for a second there, I felt like people are just going to come through MOW and go and get signed by AEW. It, it just it, it it just felt it, it felt cool, but that's not the case. But for a second there, I was like, eh, eh. <laughs> I, I like the history of a lot of the people that have gone, have come through there and yeah, a lot of, some of them have gone to AEW, but I still think it's easily one of the top independent companies. And I don't even hundred percent like look at it exactly like every other company. There's definitely like, for me, there's this like handful of companies where it's just like, you're not uh, a regular independent company, but you're also like not necessarily on national TV every week. Like, WWE and AEW and have some of those same contracts that mm-hmm. the, the, those two do. So you're like definitely MLW is in that nice middle ground. And it's, it's one of those things too, that, you know, if you got YouTube, you can watch it. Yeah. Like, um, I guess the, I've seen it. I've seen, I've watched like a few like videos and stuff about like people talking about like professional wrestling and I guess where professional wrestling is. And I've, in some of those videos, it's like said, like, like, national like having a national tv product is cool um but like when it gets to that level like it kind of like takes a takes away a little bit of like the magic of it um like when like before like wwe i think became like a publicly traded company and we had like i mean i know people like hype up the attitude era or whatever i mean sometimes when you go back and look at the attitude era like the care, I think the biggest thing with the Attitude Era was that all the characters were like top notch, mm-hmm. and like for me, um, like that I, I, I like, 
I thoroughly enjoyed like the backstage stuff that they did more than more than what they did in the ring. Like that's the stuff I was looking for. Like if I like if I go back and and look up some stuff in the Attitude Era, like I'm looking for like backstage segments and like the little stories that they tell throughout the show. Um, and like like I feel like that's what wrestling is missing. Like on like the like I guess like the two main shows because um, they don't have a lot of that, and I feel like that's like a great way to like get more people on TV Mm -hmm. um, and tell other stories. Cause like the way WWE used to feel was like, you have like, we start here at bet. We start here at backlash, like new year, we start a backlash or whatever. And we're going through all these other, all the pay-per-views throughout the year have like, are all like culminations of of, the little stories that are going on in between things. Um, And like there were stories in the ring, there were stories um, in the back or whatever, and like everything. And as like the as the year went on, like everything everything came to a climax at WrestleMania. Whether the story ended at WrestleMania or the story just got something added to it at WrestleMania, everything everything came to a head at WrestleMania. And I don't and I feel like like now I think about it like I I don't feel like that's how it is anymore, and it's weird. Um, and I've, I've, I think I wish AEW did. I mean, I know that I know like a lot of like their, like their talent, they have like YouTube channels and stuff and that's cool. Great. And awesome. But I want, I would want them to do more stuff, more backstagey stuff, like on screen during the show. Like even, even if it was to like fill some time, fill some time, that would be great. Because I feel like that just adds that just adds to the product, um, but that's just me. That that's one thing I enjoy about MLW is like, yeah, you we give you the wrestling or whatever, we give you that sports feel, um, but we're also gonna give you like funny backstage segments and shit like that. Like a, a lot of the stuff I'm doing, the stuff me and Calvin are doing right now, I thoroughly enjoy. Yeah, it's it's something to connect everything together. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the th- Best analogies I've ever heard for wrestling, uh, I won't say who said it, but they said that, you know, professional wrestling is performing arts. And I was like, yeah. oh, I never quite looked at it like that. I always looked at it as, you know, like the origin, like it's a circus act and, you know, you know, traveling show and blah, 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 blah. But when you, you throw in, you know, performing arts, that goes like, okay, yeah, like you, you'll have, you have like the acting part that you need for, you know, backstage stuff. You need, uh, obviously the wrestling like in the ring. And like, you need like all these, like, like performing arts is, is a very big term and have things that could be divided up into it. So yeah, if it's just like wrestling, I know there's people out there that love that, but like you need, you need a variety. Definitely. And like with like variety, like you need, you need something different. You need something for everybody on your card. I don't care what what the show is, how big the show is, or where the show is. Like you need something for everybody. You need all. You need as many styles as you can put on a on a card comfortably and like to where it doesn't eat up. Like it doesn't last for like five hours because um, that should, that would be exhausting. But like mm-hmm. you need as much like variety as you possibly can on a show because. Again, not everybody likes the same things, but if you have like a variety of different flavors on your show, you can hook. Like, I guess what I guess you would say, like every demographic, or mm-hmm. whatever, you can hit and be like, "Hey, we got something for you. We got something for you. We got something for you, or whatever." And like, I mean, there definitely there's still going to be people in the world that you can't please, but like, if you try to if you try to please all these demographics or whatever, like, I feel like you're going to be good. I, I got some other wrestling topics. We'll get into those a little later. Uh, there's a tweet from you uh, that you tweeted recently as in the past couple of days, and I haven't heard an update on it, but you said you're adopting a cat. I am. And the cat, I, I have a cat. Uh, the cat's here. Hell yeah. It's currently hiding um, in our bedroom or whatever. Cause we have like a, we have one of those beds that has like the drawers on the side. And then like, like, I guess I, it has like a shelf up top the headboard okay yeah and then like and then like toward the back or whatever there's a space that you that i guess animals can go through but um but yeah it's currently hiding back there um it was a little we got it from a shelter it was a little like uh i guess like 
not like okay so like when we walk into the shelter and we're looking through the window at it like it's like hissing at us Ugh. but then when we go around or whatever um and like open up the cage and like pet it and stuff it's chill um so i feel like it's a little because it is it's definitely like scary or whatever but um it's it is a sweetheart like i was petting it and like headbutted my hand Aww. and the uh the i guess like what do you call like one of the employees at the one of the volunteers at the shelter was like he's claimed you and i was like let's go okay he's <laughs> claiming me i guess i gotta get him now yeah uh um, but have you picked out a my, name uh I think I think we're gonna stick with the name that it can, that it that uh, he has. His name's Bello. Um, cool. I like it. Um, I think it means beautiful. Um, I mean, all my all my other friends that have cats, they all said that like it's gonna he's gonna be he's gonna hide for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, you kind of just gotta let you kind of gotta let cats call their call the shots and not you like try to like force it out of its space. Yeah. Um, because I because from what I've been reading, cats are more like human beings than anything. Yeah. Yeah, we got we got two cats. One we bought as a kitten, and it was like crazy perfect timing. Uh, we had a cat that uh, we ended up having to like put down, and I think uh, it was like a couple of days, couple yeah, a couple of days later, we found out that one of my now wife's family members had uh, kittens uh, four weeks prior, and mm-hmm. we we got to see them, and we like kind of like picked the one we wanted, but. Uh, they have to be with their mother for about eight weeks and we got a call mm-hmm. after seven weeks. Uh, so it was like three weeks later that the mother was starting to like reject it. Like, no, like you're no longer like my kid. And I don't know exactly the proper terminology, but I know it's one of those things where it's like, like it's the next phase. So uh, we went and picked him up. His name is Dexter. And then like, I fell in love with him and uh, a couple years later, which was, this was a little over a year ago. We were like, Let's let's adopt because I've never gotten uh, any animal from a shelter. So like we uh, I think it was January 3rd of last year. We went and looked at this one shelter and the first cat we found was like adorable. But unfortunately, she was taken. And then we explained to uh, one of the workers what we were looking for. We're like, well, you know, we have a cat and we want one that's roughly the same age because we don't want too young. And then we don't want too old, like something just like around the age of like two or three. And they're mm-hmm. like, oh, well, we have a cat named Carter, and it's um, an orange uh, tabby cat. And yeah, we have, our, our cat's orange. It's like an orange mix or something like yeah. that. It's a year old. And I re- I've always wanted a tabby, an orange tabby. And, like, I immediately fell in love, and we decided that day, like, we're, we're adopting him. But, like, we had to uh, go through the process and everything, and get approval from our landlord uh we renamed him because i i my thing when it comes to naming animals i don't want a regular name mm-hmm. I, I want it to be special like my dog is named zool from ghostbusters dexter oh, okay. which granted dexter is a normal name but the first show that me and my wife started watching together and it was me getting her into it even though the show was already over was dexter so we, yeah. we like t- like that was like a for us we're like that's perfect and for this one we named Brownie because he's orange and like I'm a Cleveland Browns fan. So, mm-hmm. and uh, the, I love the elf logo, the elf named Brownie. So I'm like, Oh, this is perfect. And yeah, it was the same way with him. We had the issue though of uh, when you have to introduce like two cats, like that is hell, even to the point of like for the first week or so Brownie mostly stayed in uh, one of our bathrooms. Mm-hmm. And like we we would go in and out and love on them and all that kind of stuff like get like let them know like everything's fine because even like if I show you pictures of like the day we got him he looks so sad like I don't know you know what kind of life he lived prior to the shelter and like probably you know not having like regular people to love on you at the shelter like probably took mm-hmm. a toll on him but um yeah so we go in there love on him you know like like this is your home buddy and like make it make him feel happy but. Literally, like, the day we brought him home and put him in that bathroom, Dexter smelled him and, like, on us and, like, hissed. Like, I had never seen him hiss before. Like, I mean, I've mm-hmm. seen him hiss, but, like, to this level, I was like, oh, because, like, he was pissed. So we had the, that trouble of introducing, the, uh, getting that process going. Luckily, it's all worked out. But Brownie himself, like, there was definitely, like, a six-month period where 
he would slowly but surely like do something that he had never done before, like every mm-hmm. so once in a while. And I always say like to me, it ended right around right around the six month mark, maybe a little bit after I, I wake up in bed uh, and he's like cuddling next to me and he had never slept in our bed. So like I knew like he now was like, oh, I'm comfortable being in the bed with you. So, yeah, uh, I think I think adopting cats cool. And it's funny thing with me. I don't know about you, but I'm I was always more of a dog guy. But yeah, over, over yeah. the past year and a half, I'm now a cat guy. Yeah, I was definitely a, a dog person growing up or not, not necessarily growing up because when I was growing up, I was scared of dogs. But like as I get into like, my teenage years, definitely more of a dog person. Um, but I've always thought cats were cool. I just, mm-hmm. The only thing with cats is that they're super independent. So it's like, like they'll fuck with you and they want to fuck with you. And if they don't want to fuck with you, like they're not going to fuck with you. And there ain't nothing you can do about it. Um, like like I, I, think, I think I mentioned, like, like Bello, Bello hit, well, it, it, he'll hiss at you. He'll definitely hiss at you. Mm-hmm. Um, but like like the people at the shelter said, he's never like swatted or anything. He'll just hiss. Um, I think that's his like defense mechanism. I don't yeah. know what his like life before the shelter was. Um, they told us that he was a, uh, he was a surrender. Um, the owner, I guess the owner surrendered, uh, uh, him to the shelter. Huh. Um, so I don't, I don't, they, I mean, they, I guess they don't have, they didn't give us any other backstory on that surrender, but I would really like to know mm-hmm. like the extent of it. Um, so I know what the, what the cat's trauma is. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, I think, I think he's had like surgery on something also. Um, I got to look back into his file on that. But, you know, like, like I said, they said, give him as much time as he needs. And I'm going to do that because I'm not in a rush. Um, but when he does come around, I'm going to shower him in treats. <laughs> yeah. Like uh, the crazy thing about Brownie is he is legitimately a love bug. Like I, I've said often like to my wife that he has like some dog qualities. To the point of like, there's times where we'll call him and he'll come and like, or he'll just like, he'll want to cuddle just flat out. Be like, no, I'm like, I'm like, I'm laying with you. Like pet me. And like, I mean, yeah, he'll have his like, definitely is an independent moments, but he's one of those that, uh, if I see him like laying on the couch and maybe I want to pick him up and like hug him for a second, he doesn't seem to get mad. Doesn't hiss, doesn't meow. He's just like, all right, I'm taking it. And like, to, to me, that's so cool. I hope I hope Bellows like that once he once he warms up because like that's what my girl I me mean, not girlfriend that's what my fiance or whatever <laughs> that's the reason why she wanted to like get a cat she wants a cat that's cuddly and stuff um, so hopefully he is cuddly uh, once he warms up. The only thing we knew about Brownie like because I actually have a screenshot of his uh, the website listing for him they said they found him in a pond in West Virginia and to me I'm like well. How did he get there? Like, especially like seeing how much of like a love bug he is. Like, literally, they even they even said that in the uh, the write up. We're saying like, oh, he's like he seems to be shy now, but we think in the right home he would be a a huge love bug, and like it's one hundred percent true. So like seeing how like affectionate he is and all this kind of stuff, I'm like, who would let this cat go? Like that boggles my mind. Like, and I I, I kind of think of it too as if I lost him, I would be like so upset. Mm-hmm. So like, is there somebody out there who's upset, or the like, were they just neglectful and it's like I don't care? Man, I think for some people, it's um, they'll get a they'll get a pet, um, and you know they'll realize it's not for them. But instead of going through the appropriate channels, they just kind of like get rid of it. Um, and like, I mean, I I feel like realizing that you're not a pet person is it's okay. Mm-hmm. Like it happens. Like um, like you can definitely like give the the pet up but do it the right way yeah um, it's, it's not like it's it's not, it's not like it's a child that you created or whatever and like you and then you realize oh, th- this is not for me like like that that's a whole other that's a whole different situation but like it's it's a it's a pet or whatever like if you f- if you feel like you're not gonna be able to love it like it needs to be loved let somebody else mm-hmm. love that love that pet like it needs to be loved yeah because I mean, there's there's people out there that are looking and yeah, like us getting brownie that to me, and like the thing that uh my wife went through, like when, when she, we lost the first cat, like that was her cat for a couple of years before uh, before we met and everything. And that cat was like very affectionate, not necessarily towards me, but definitely towards her. So when we had to like put her down, 
she like lost that. And even with Dexter, like Dexter is not a hundred percent love you like that. But when we got Brownie, it was like this perfect replacement of like, Oh, everything that you you've wanted from Dexter. Well, here it is with another cat. And like, we don't toss Dexter aside. Like I like actually, uh, early on, like, cause like what he'll do is he'll pop his head in my, in the, my office while I'm recording sometimes. And like, he'll sit Ooh. here, like sit here with me and like, he won't sit on my lap, but he'll like stand by looking at me. Maybe I'll grab a toy and like play with him a little bit, but like we show them both love. Is this the, uh, only pet you have or is there uh, other yeah, ones? The, this is the only pet, the only pet I've, I've had, I guess in adulthood, uh, okay. as like, a, in like, well, I guess my adolescence, we had, my family had a dog. Um, and like my, my, so my mom got it from like a puppy mill. Um, and, uh, like she, I guess she didn't, she didn't, I guess like listen to like the, um, the, I guess like the owners or whatever. Um, cause she, cause like when, when the dog like, like grew up and it was like, the dog was pretty big. Uh, cause it was like a mix. It was like a pit. It was a, it was a pit bo- boxer, um, Rottweiler, and chow mix i think there might have been one other dog one other dog in there but those are the four that i remember and so it was a pretty big dog uh and like my mom was like she was not having it or whatever like she didn't want to take care of it so like the responsibility fell on us kids and like we did we 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 did the absolute best we could um with the knowledge of being a child um but like i think we went to school one day and my mom had taken it she didn't tell us and she took it back to the shelter and I'm just like, lady, you like you you are the worst. Like I like I was so mad at my mom for like months. Like I like oh my god, it was bad. Um, like oh my god, I love that dog. Her name was Olivia, sweetest dog ever. Was it like you were mad that she took her, or was it that you didn't get to say goodbye? Both. Okay, I I think the not getting to say goodbye especially to an animal is, is, is huge. Like when we put down, uh, the cat previous, like we were there for it. And I know the only other time I ever had to deal with that was when we had to put down my, uh, childhood dog, which was a poodle. And, mm-hmm. um, I, I was like, I have to be there for it. And like my mom, like she didn't want to go. Like I was like, you know, like I, I, you kind of, you should have like that in the final moment where you're like, you're with them, but she passed on it, but I'll like, to me, I'll never forget it. And like, it's not like a, a sick way. Like, trust me, like when that went in and like the life to vanish like that, that crushed me, but I'll always have that, that final ride with him because he, when he was younger, he loved going on rides and, uh, he loved, uh, like most dogs, he liked cheese. So like mm-hmm. I, um, there was a blanket that I had made for my mom that has had his picture on it. I wrapped him up in it, uh, grabbed some cheese and like he ate it on the way there. And, you know, as much as like, I hated what happened when we got there, but which I, I knew it had to happen. Mm-hmm. I, I value that final ride because I, I got to experience it with him. And then I got to be there when he, uh, he went. Cause I do like what, uh, what I've heard people say on the internet. It's like, you know, you should be there for their final moment because you know, you were, you were there for, for their whole life and you were their whole life. So like you should comfort them. Yeah. That is, that, that does sound like a beautiful moment to get wrapped up, have your favorite snack. Yeah. But yay, yay. Adopting animals. <laughs> Please. Yay to adopting animals. Yeah. Uh, uh, one thing I want to get into is, uh, to kind of, you know, get off from the, the morbid stuff is, uh, one thing I know you from outside of wrestling kind of is a uh, TikTok. Yes. And uh, what what's that like, you know, being, you know, a, a wrestler on there and like a, a wrestler of some note? Because I think one of my biggest things, like just watching, it's like, I don't I don't understand how like certain wrestlers don't have a following. But like some of the wrestlers that do have a following are like wrestlers I had never heard of. And I mean, obviously they got they got popular on TikTok for other reasons. But I'm still like, well, why is nobody following fucking uh Alex Kane more like, well, why don't we follow Justin Navarro or like, shit like that. I mean, there's some other wrestlers too, but I'm like, what the hell guys, man, it's, it, it's, it's weird. It's very weird. The guy, like, I think I was on TikTok before I got signed by MLW and I saw like getting signed by MLW would like, people would be like, Oh yeah, Alex Kane. Oh yeah. That's not how it, ha- that's not how it worked. Wow. Um, but like, 
like they always say like you have to like find your niche mm-hmm. or whatever and like my niche is wrestling but like i just i don't just post wrestling content as you can see yeah. um like i just i'm i'm yeah my accounts are storing bodies or there's probably somewhere on there since alex kane but like i am like like just i guess there, there'll be times when i'm in characters other times that i'm not i'm like i just i'm a down-to-earth dude like and i feel like a lot of people that follow me appreciate that um I remember uh, a few week, like a week or two ago, I was on the phone with my agent, um, and she was like, she was at a show. Uh, I think it was a paradigm show, and the people in front of her were saying, I think they showed like a package of me return because I, I, I returned to paradigm next next month, I believe, um, and they were like, oh, I saw him on TikTok. He's not, he doesn't act like he's on TV, and like. Like I, because I couldn't hear like the tone in which they were saying it. Mm-hmm. Um, like I don't know, but that's what she told me. Like she said, I don't act like I'm on TV. Or, or they, no, their exact words were, "I don't act like I know I'm on TV." Um, and like <laughs> I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. And I, I made a video about it. Like it was kind of yeah. people took it as like satire or whatever. I was being serious, <laughs> but people took it as satire. But it's just like. I do see people on like wrestlers that are on, on TV on TikTok, and they're not. They're like I understand like a lot of them are WWE superstars, but I can like see that you're not being genuine. Like you don't interact with the people that that um, that uh, you know interact with your stuff. Like yeah, you have a bunch of followers, but like you're not interacting with anybody. And I feel like that's that's what social media is for. It's for the social interaction, or whatever, with you know people that you may never see or that you may see. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, like I, I think when I first got on TikTok, like. It wasn't it, for me. It wasn't about like me being a wrestler or whatever. I was just gonna like be my like everyday self. Um, and I was getting, I fell into the rabbit hole of political TikTok, and uh, phew, that is uh, that's a scary place. Um, mm-hmm. So I had to like step back, like delete all of that stuff, um, <laughs> and like uh, and and I guess like reset, like and like start uploading my wrestling content to there, and that's when things started to pick up. Um, but like, I just, I just want to be genuine to people and like, I mean, and just like kind of like be myself. Like, yeah. Or all, like, again, like I said at the beginning, like not all of my videos are about wrestling, but like none, of, like, like none of my takes and none of my videos are like offensive. Like I'm not telling, I'm not saying that I hate this person or that person or whatever. The only thing that like may make anybody uncomfortable is if I talk about race, but like, that is my experience as a black man mm-hmm. in America in any of these like uh, mediums of entertainment or like social media or anything like that. Like I'm black first before anything. Yeah. Um, so like I should be able to talk about these things and sometimes it's a little uncomfortable, but you know what? Being black in America sometimes is very uncomfortable. Yeah. That's a, that's a big thing, you know, I mean, we'll get, we'll get to it later too, but uh, or yeah, like sometimes like, yeah, we, as white people we need we need to be uncomfortable about it and there's there's a lot to i think un, unpack about it uh like i know one thing that i've seen a lot like on tiktok when it comes to like race stuff is uh the whole notion of like oh i don't like i don't i don't see color i've always like growing up i don't say always like recently but like growing up i kind of like that but now like as an adult i'm like it has the right message wrong wording as in i yeah. look at it as like i won't judge you Mm-hmm. by your color or your race or even your religion to an extent it's just like you you are a person mm-hmm. like no different from anybody else like when it comes to uh a lot of the basic things but like yeah like their skin color difference so I thought that's the big thing to look at is, is if we're, we're all people let's treat each other like that so like and i i guess i love the sentiment like but like the way that i the, i guess the way that i see it is um as, as people, we focus too much on like the individual or whatever. Like individually, yeah, most people aren't racist, or aren't racist or whatever. Um, like if if someone's racist, you're probably you're you're either not going to know it by some, by what they say, but you can see it in their actions. Mm-hmm. Um, but like when like when like when black people in, in America are talking about racism, we're not talking about the individual interaction or whatever. Because like though, I mean do I deal with racism every day of my life as like, like every single day? No, I don't. Um, but it's, but racism, the ism in the, in the, at the end of that word, the ism means system or whatever that is a system. Um, so like, 
when like you you'll see on TikTok, people talk about oppression. People talk about you know the different things that happen. You see the things that happen in media, in the media, or whatever. And like some of the stuff that happens in media is bullshit. And other times in media, it's, it, they're covering you know what's there or whatever. Like um, like I I think the most annoying thing for me is when people say that like oh like uh, this this candidate is dividing us or this is dividing us like. The, that that that's a certain level of privilege to 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 say that that these that these recent things are dividing us mm-hmm. when when you look at the history of this country we have literally never been together we've never been together mm-hmm. like like anecdotally uh, like like i guess again in those like little like personal uh like stories and interactions like yeah there's been like some like unity there but like as a whole we've never been together we've always been divided on some line somewhere and like yeah it would be great that if we could all just like come together and realize like who's really fucking everybody um but (laughs) like we're again we're so divided on it's like party lines and like on like wording of this and the wording of that um like i always tell my girl my my fiance like the the day that the the day that we can come together is the day that like everybody like when when Black Lives Matter is said uh, like that people are like oh yeah you guys we do need to make sure you guys know that you guys matter not not oh all lives matter or, oh what about this or oh what about that like when everybody on the planet when every, yeah everybody on the planet can like be like okay yes Black Lives do matter mm-hmm. you guys you guys do matter and we're gonna make sure you guys know that you matter because like. Like the the liter- actually yeah the fucking literature the fucking media like like the history of of this planet or whatever when you when you really look at it um like uh was I guess we're objectively or whatever like you can see like hey uh yeah nobody really fucks with was black was black people like nobody nobody really fucks with you guys like and I'm so sorry like when people can get to that point. And, and they're thinking or whatever, then I think like things, could, we can really bridge that gap. And then also when we get to the point where racism, talking about racism and race and, and, and discrimination and oppression, when that, when those topics don't become taboo to talk about, and we can just talk about them and have the discourse about them and, you know, learn um, and, you know, um, start to heal wounds. That's when, that's when things are good. That's when things are really going to start to get better. But, and as long as we act like these are taboo subjects that shouldn't be talked about online or on Twitter or on Facebook or on Instagram, like that, that it's going to continue to just, it's, it's going to continue to to get worse. Like these are things we have to talk about, even with politics stuff. We have to be, we have to have these conversations. Yeah. They're not just going to go away. Like you have to have these conversations. And you know, like with with my TikTok platform, like if I can if I can learn something, or you know, if I can teach something, if I can bring something to light for somebody, like I'm going to do that. Like and if a certain company of one of those big two companies are like, Oh, you talk about race. You talk about race as a black man in America. We can't hire you. I don't want to work there. Mm -hmm. I don't want to work there. I don't want to be somewhere where like I have to continue. Like I'm again, I like when I'm, when I'm, when I'm putting out this content, like I'm not saying it in a mean way. I'm not saying it in a way to piss anybody off. Like I'm most majority of the time I'm being calm about it. Sometimes I do it even in a funny way. Uh, but like, I don't want to be somewhere where like I can't be myself or whatever because because the subject matter makes you uncomfortable. Um, because again, at the end of the day, at the beginning and the end of the day, I am a black man, and I experience just just like everybody else, every other black person, especially in this country, I am experiencing what everybody is experiencing, and I feel for each and every one of y'all. Um, so I'm not gonna let. Uh, being an entertainer or being a rest, being a, being a superstar, whatever the hell, whatever you want to call it, stop me from being a black man. Thank you for letting me get that out. <laughs> well, that uh, that can get into the actually a great transition to what we did last year here during uh Black History Month or Black Wrestlers Matter, however you want to put it for for this type of scenario is you know what was it like for you the struggles that you had you know growing up. Uh, being black, whether it be uh, just the part growing up or you know, even just in the, the wrestling industry, like troubles you have fought, like especially too, like being from the South, I can't imagine it's a hundred percent easy. Um, Yeah. Like, I guess like growing up, like, like, like I think the first time 
I realized I was black was I was in, I, what was I, fifth grade? Fifth grade, or was, no, no, third grade. Uh, we were on the playground and we were playing and like this girl comes up and she's, she starts playing with the other person. And then I start to try to play with them. And she is like, I can't play with you because you're Brown or you're black. And my mommy doesn't like that. And I'm just like, like I'm, like I was floored. Like I can, I can, I can just kind of feel like how I felt then I was floored. Um, and and then she went on to say, like, you got you're dirty, you need to be cleaned. And I'm just like, what is going on here? What is this? Um, and then like I went home and I asked my mom, like, can you like scrub the dirt off me? I'm dirty. And like the the kid, one of the kids at the playground didn't want to play with me. Um, and uh my mom, she like started to cry a little bit. Um uh, and I think, like for her, it was like, damn, like I, I didn't, I didn't think that like this moment would happen this early, um, but like, like that, that shit was heartbreaking. And then like, and then I guess like then like my mom, she didn't like, so like, she comforted me, but like from then on, since like I kind of like already like, kind of like knew like what like what my identity was, like she started to like educate me on like the certain on certain things, um, like, um, uh, like. <sighs> Uh, like growing up, like like she would always told us, like if you see like the Confederate flag in someone's yard, don't go over there. They don't like black people or whatever. So like that was like my so like that's how I associated with that like piece of fabric. Like anytime I saw it, um, uh, and then as far as like like wrestling goes, like I, I, I have I guess I haven't had like anything like personally personally happened to me and and unless it did and like i just i didn't pick up on it um but like growing up watching wrestling and watching like we what did we have like when i started watching wrestling um we had the rock um and booker t and then like kofi kingston and shelton benjamin and r-truth um and there's many more to name naomi jazz jacqueline but like growing up to have never seen like uh like a like a a black man at like the top of the ladder at the top of the company was always weird to me um and like as like time went on and like i started like getting on the internet and stuff like that and saying like there's always looking up has there ever been a black wwe champion and like that and like for so long that never happening when bit when uh when kofi finally won the belt like like there hasn't been many, there really hasn't been much, many moments like watching wrestling. Like I've gotten like super emotionally invested. Um, uh, like watch, like, I guess like the only other time I've like, I really got invested in like a wrestling storyline was like when Randy Orton was going like ape shit on the McMahon family and just like punting everybody's head off. Like, like that, like that's one of those times where, like, I got emotionally invested, but like, as like, I guess like a black uh, man or black, yeah, black man or whatever watching wrestling or, being a wrestler, like like Kofi winning the WWE Championship was the first time like I really like like I've ever like cried about wrestling. Like I I like I like I cried I cried for a good like thirty minutes about that because that was huge. Um, and like even though like WWE tried to make it like not about him being a black man, which was so fucking weird, but they tried they tried so hard to make it not about him being a black man and just him you know being the hero. Or whatever, I'm overcoming adversity. I'm like, I don't want to hear any of that bullshit. Or whatever. This is a black man uh, winning the WWE championship, um, and you know we're gonna celebrate this shit. Mm-hmm. In his, I mean, they didn't. Uh, his reign kind of felt like because I think like before it happened, like people were people were mentioning that, and like sometimes like with with the E, it feels like. Oh, you guys are talking about this. Oh, well, oh, you think we're racist? We think we're this? We think we're that? Or whatever. It's like, oh, well, here we 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 did this or whatever. Now uh, we're gonna let it go on for a little bit, and then we're gonna take it away. We did it. We did it, guys. We did it. You ended his reign in six seconds, or it might have even been less than. Um, and then like with Big E, like I think we were talking like before we got on the phone, we got on the recording and podcast, like. Um, they booked his run like terribly. Like it was still like when Biggie won the WWE Championship, even when he won the Intercontinental Championship. Like those two wins, like 
even though like it, it it's it's gonna it's I'm gonna hold like a it, I'm gonna hold it in a special place in my heart or whatever because it's a it's a man that is as dark as me or whatever that I kind of see myself in like he won the championship or whatever like I I can resonate with that but I also feel like everybody like all the re- all of wrestling kind of resonated with it a little bit um, and like even then like they, they booked him terribly like they're booking Bobby pretty well. Um, yeah. I wish that they could like take what they do with Bobby and apply that to everybody else. And I feel like they're only booking Bobby well because he's a heel. But like when it comes to a face black champion, it's like eh, we don't know what to do here. We can't, we can't, we can't, uh, we can't, um, uh, uh, we can't, ro- we can't roll you in a bunch of stereotypes. You know, we, what, 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 what do we do here? Like we can't, we, you, you can't be angry. You're a baby face. Um, I think that shit is so lame. Like you have all of these writers and all of and all of this time to like come up with stuff. Like, give me a solid baby face run with a person that looks like me, and I and that, not just one. Give me several throughout the year, throughout the years coming or whatever. And I promise you, we'll be happy. We will be happy. Uh, we 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 will be happy. We will be able to get behind it. And you know, really run with it. But like when you book this man's reign, like he's an afterthought. It's just like, dude, do you not do you do you think we don't see what is going on here? And then when people are like, Oh yeah, it's not about race, it's not about race, it's not about race. But when I when when people say this stuff to me, I I if I can't look them in their eye, or if or, like or I think I put out a video yesterday about it. When people what people don't understand is the ism on the end of that that word that we were talking about earlier, the ism on that is system. And everything within that system is affected by what is going on in the system. I know that kind of felt, felt sounded repetitive, but that's how it is. We have the system and everything else around that system is affected by what is going on in the system. So if there is racism in the system, if there's racism, then it's affecting everything else, everything else around it. Like, and no matter how like great like people are how like i guess like uh how inclusive people are um like it's still there and until it is neutralized it's go- it's going to be affecting everything on the outside i know that was a lot and i'm sorry uh, <laughs> but i had to I had to explain that it's it's there it's there it's it's in wrestling it's it, like it's always been there um and until we have these conversations about racism in professional wrestling it's going to continue to be like like it's going to continue to fester and be that cancer that it is you know who would have been a really good baby face black champion and i'm probably only saying <laughs> no I, I i know you believe that one uh mm-hmm. i'm only probably saying this because i literally have two figures of him on my wall and i remember as a kid i loved him and if they would have probably put him put the title on him at the right time it would have been Drunk great a little bit later so in between Junkyard Dog and Shelton Benjamin, that's funny. Hmm. He was, I felt like he wasn't in WWE that long and I, I he might've had a bad reputation, but he, I can't say who, who is it? Ahmed Johnson. I see. I, that was on the tip of my tongue. That was on the tip of my tongue. I feel like, I think he was, I think he was going to win it. But yeah. Then, like, some like backstage politics shit happened. <sighs> Yeah, because when that run happened, I fucking loved him. And like going back and like looking at some of that stuff, and like that's why, like, actually, there's because I, while we were talking, I'm like, I looked on my wall, I'm like, how many black wrestlers do I have? Like, figure wise, I have five. Two of them are Ahmed Johnson, the others are King Mabel, uh, Kama, and D Lo. Man, I used, I loved D Lo growing up. And like when I, I think one of the first wrestling games I played was WWF Warzone, and Ahmed, I would use Ahmed Johnson all the time. I had no idea who he was or whatever because I wasn't watching wrestling at the time when I was playing the game. But like, yeah. I thought he was dope as fuck. His music was cool. His mm-hmm. moveset was cool. He looked cool. Like, I re- I remember him and Triple H being around at the same time, and like their their finishers are are similar. But I'm like, Pearl River Plunge just looks cool as shit. Man, I gotta. I'm going to go back and watch Ahmed Johnson now. Like, he has some, like, funny promo moments and everything mm-hmm. that, like, people, like, talk about now. And, like, he had, what was it, like, two sets of knee pads on his legs or something? Because he had, like, another set, like, around his calves. Mm-hmm. 
Like, I don't know. Like, I, I fucking loved him. I think he's great. Man, bro. Yeah, that would have been fire. That would have been nuts. And, like, that's at the right time. Like, he could have been, like, he could have been a little angry. Like, not necessarily mm-hmm. in, like, a mean way, but, like, he just had that intensity. Yeah. Yeah, that would have been fire. That would have been fire. Imagine, wrestling, wrestling would probably be way cooler now. <laughs> if that happened then, then wrestling would be way cooler now. Man, that would have been cool. I think what what's crazy about your story is, like, like growing up and everything, like, you're not necessarily that old. So when I like yeah. put a time frame of like roughly when that was, it's kind of like when I hear that, I think like seventies, eighties or sometime before then, but it's like, Oh no, that wasn't, that was probably like what in the two thousands. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah. Two thousands, like really early, early two thousands. Yeah. yeah. Ugh. I, I said it a lot last year. I think like during these interviews, like maybe it's because like where I grew up and everything and like some of you know, my parents and my grandparents, well, one set of grandparent or one grandparent, maybe not the other set, but like, I kind of thought like, you know, racism was over. But then as like, as I got older, I was like, oh no, it's, it's not. Oh shit. Yeah. It's not, yeah. 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 I feel like, um, yeah, I feel, yeah. I feel like a lot of people feel like that. If a lot of people felt like racism was over, we were, we were a post-racial society. So like that. I've heard that a few times. Um, but, uh, something something that ingrained something that ingrained in the society in which we live doesn't go away that quickly. It doesn't go away with, uh, you know, a civil rights bill being passed. Mm-hmm. Like it, that, that, that doesn't, that doesn't make something like that go away. Like it's in, since it's ingrained within the system, the system is either going to have to be overhauled or burned down. Um, one of the two is going to have to happen. It's not going to go It's because like, when you think about it, a lot of people that, you know, are in power or, you know, have power in this country were alive during that time. Mm-hmm. Most of the people that are in Congress were alive when Dr. King was assassinated. They were alive when Malcolm X was assassinated, uh, Fred Hampton, um, you know, all these, all these like like major like figures of of the black community. Like you were around, you saw this, you witnessed, you know why they were like taken out. Um, and like instead of doing the work and like and i guess like trying to like fix just try, trying to fix society like we just continue and just like kind of like sweep it under the rug like with the the my, our friend martin like that movie had me traumatized in the i was, I think I was in the third grade when i saw it i that movie had me traumatized like they don't show Dr. King being assassinated, but like they have like one of those like little like flashes, whatever that happens, and then they talk about it. Um, and like for the longest time, I could not sit near a window uh, or like like anything. Like I could not sit near a window for like the longest time. A sliding glass door, could not sit around it. Didn't want to be near it, especially at nighttime was the worst. Like I had like like I didn't know what the feeling was when I was a kid. But like now, like as an adult, like I know that it was fear and anxiety. Like I thought someone was going to assassinate me because I was because I was black. Um, and like when we go back and we like not even go back, like even now, like we're learning more and more about Dr. King and more and more about the civil rights movement, and knowing that it wasn't it really wasn't that long ago. Um, but like they put it in black and white to make it seem like it was ages ago when it really wasn't. It's like fifty. It's been like fifty or sixty years since. Um, like, man, that, 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 that is nuts. But like the way that they talk about Dr. King now, like all of February, all these companies or whatever are going to be like, oh yeah, Dr. King was amazing. But at the time that Dr. King was, you know, speaking his message, when Malcolm X was speaking his message, like they were hated mm-hmm. for it. Like, especially with Dr. King, like, like a lot of his message was nonviolent. I think Toward the like the end of his life, before he got assassinated, he started to like because um, I, I think I've read a few places that him and him and MLK weren't M- enemies or whatever. They had two, they wanted this they wanted the same thing. They just went about it two different ways. But um, like if you listen to um, I can probably I can find it and probably send it to you. Um, but like toward the end of Dr. King's life, he started to realize that like his approach probably wasn't the best approach. 
because like yes i'm trying to meet you with nonviolence, but you keep meeting me with violence and it's like you're not hearing what i'm saying mm -hmm. you're not you're not digesting it um so like he started to think like maybe he should have went, went went the militant route uh with it um and like when like again like when he was like when he was you know doing his thing like he was the most hated man in america like people like he was like on I think he was like on the FBI's like most wanted list. Like he was number one. Um, but like now after he's dead or whatever, like now everybody's trying to romanticize it and people love to throw MLK quotes at, you know, uh a lot of, they love to throw it at black people. They love to throw it at the BLM movement. They they just they love it. Like, oh uh Dr. King wouldn't be um uh, wouldn't wouldn't approve this. If Dr. King if Dr. King can't, like, I think the Boondocks did an episode, which was hilarious. Yeah. But I, honestly, I do think if Dr. King came back today and still saw we were still fighting for the same shit that he was fighting for when he was on, when he was walking to Earth, he probably, he'd probably be extremely pissed off. Extremely pissed off. Because it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it, it, it's never made any sense. It doesn't make any sense. And like, with, with pro wrestling, like, um, like I've heard people say when, when the whole Big Swall thing came out, um, and like uh, first of all, I don't. A lot of people did not read, did not listen to, did not listen to the, the, any of the words that she said. They list, they they read the, they read the the um, I can't remember who published like the, I guess like the conversation. They read that, and I think that publication took everything she said out of context. One, two, um, and like the headline did her note like. The, the headline did her no justice. Mm -hmm. um, like when that whole thing came out and like her daughter was talking about representation, like I have like friends of mine who aren't necessarily pro wrestling fans, but they watch pro wrestling now. And like one, like one recently he was like, I, I, I turned on the TV. There was nobody that looked like me, nobody. And yes, there may be people on the roster that are black, but like they are not featured on television as much as they, they should be on television more. Mm -hmm. I've always, I always see people say, oh, it takes time. Oh, it takes time. You got to do it at the right time. I need you to take that take of it, need, it takes time and shove it where the sun doesn't shine. Because, again, like Big Swole said, this is scripted. It is. It is what it is. It's scripted. It's scripted. It's, it's entertainment. It's television. Um, if you, ha you have, like, especially in WWE, you have, like, I don't know. How, I, I feel like there's been, like, like around, like, 50-something Maybe less WWE champions or whatever. Yeah. Um, and majority of those WWE champions are white. Okay. Um, you've had all of this time to build up. I mean, yes, they built up the Rock. Rock, amazing or whatever. For uh, I think Rock's one of those people that no, that you can't help but love. But like after the Rock, like they could have. They, 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 that one WrestleMania match that Booker T had with Triple H, he should have won the belt there. Um, but you know, that's a, that's a topic for another time. Um, but like, it's, it's really lacking the amount of like, black men that have been in your company and you've only had, we have the rock, uh, Bobby Lashley, Kofi and Biggie. We have four for all of those other champions you have, we have four and you've been around, you definitely has been around for a minute for a long ass time. Um, that's, that's a problem. And I don't, and like, it, de like, it, it doesn't take, it doesn't take this long. Like you, you WWE, like fucking when Sheamus came in, oh, uh, when he finally debuted in WWE, like he had the belt within like, what was it? Three months. Yeah. It was, so, it was, it was quick. It was quick. It was quick. You guys, you, you, you made a plan. You executed that plan. You put the belt on him in three months. I don't want to hear it takes time. It doesn't take time. It takes creating a plan and executing that plan. Like when you when you when they started pushing Roman Reigns as, you know, a single star or whatever, they for a long a lot of that time they were forcing Roman Reigns down our throats. They were forcing Roman Reigns down our throats or whatever. Like man was a baby face every time he came out, the whole crowd erupted in booze, okay? But you had they had a plan and they were going to execute that plan no matter what. And they did so. And people finally started to come around. Um, 
So again, it does not all this time nonsense. I don't want to hear it. This it, it this isn't the NFL. This is it doesn't. I, I'm even who this isn't boxing. This isn't MMA or whatever. I mean, I guess even in those realms, it doesn't really take time because their careers aren't that long. Um, it's professional wrestling. Uh, all this it takes time. Stuff is nonsense. You've had enough time. You have all the time in the world. Um, make a plan. And execute. Jade Cargill, you guys, AEW made a plan and they executed that plan. Mm -hmm. She delivered. She executed that. They executed that plan. Boom. Jade Cargill is a fucking star. It doesn't take time. I mean, it takes time to build a story. Yeah, cool. Great fucking awesome. Um, But if you are saying that it's going to take 25 years to have, to, to, you know, build the next star or whatever, uh, you are, you are smoking something. And it sounds amazing, and you should probably give me some of it if because it's, <laughs> if it's that great. Um, uh, I I I I think that you know both. I think that everybody, I guess, all like the major promotions and all the like impacts and ROHs and MLW, like MLW, like I loved. I feel like they have. I feel like um, the office does a great job of representation. Um, great, great job on that because uh, I'm a part of it. Um, and I feel like I feel like people are getting with the program, but like I don't, I, I don't want to hear this. It takes time nonsense because it doesn't take time. It takes a plan and executing that plan. Write, write, write the fucking story. Just write the story. Let's go. Uh, it, I would, I would say that yeah, it it takes time. But if that time is three months, then yeah, that's that's your time. Like. It doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't have to take as long as, as they they act like it. My man, <laughs> that was a lot. I feel good now. I mean, I felt good before, but I feel good now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, it's kind of what I've de- designed this around. Like, I, I, there's nothing I can add, add to like your story and like your perspective or anything about about being black. Because what I've said is like the things that I were I was like you know judged upon was like my weight and like how poor I was, but like that isn't necessarily like as big of a deal as like, you know, way people are treated for being black. So it's like, and I think, yeah, if, if anybody's like uh, uncomfortable, like that's something like it's shit we need to hear. And I think what sucks about like the, in the entire thing is like, you're talking about, you know, having this go away. And it, like, to me, it feels like, you know, this house was built like, you know, the house of racism and everything was built like all over a long time. And like, it's going to take a lot to destroy it because I think like one of the like issues you have is those people that are like to this day still living like it's the civil war, like they're like that type of era where they just like, ah, like I, I still look at them like that. Well, like how smart are you really when it comes down to it? Like <laughs> this is, it's fucking 2022. Uh, we have progressed like so much past that point to where like literally wake the fuck up. Like one of, one of my idols, um, is Mr. Rogers like this, like the thing that I love that he did like back during that time of segregation, you know, he had a uh, officer Clemens like come and like wash. They were washing. Uh, he was washing his feet in the pool. Like they were finding a way to show like, you know, this, there's nothing wrong with this. And you know, he, that was being shown to kids. So yeah. it's basically like if this concept can be shown for your three or four year old, you in your fucking thirties and forties, can learn the same shit too and get with the fucking program yeah and god that yeah that was fucking like what that that shit was like 60s mm-hmm. and there's people that are still still acting that way that's why i said like it's it's one of those things that i fear it's going to take a few more generations but I, oh yeah most, most like definitely. my hope is like one day like yeah we we don't look at it like that but people just look at it like yeah that's stupid like the way we look at the way uh quote which is we're treated because like, oh, like, oh, you're we think you're a witch. Like, we're going to burn you at that time. That seemed like people are like, oh, yeah, that, that makes sense. And now we look back at it, it's like, how dumb were you? It's going to take a revolution. It's what yeah. it's going to take. It's going to take. It's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be pretty, but it's, it's going to take a revolution. It's going to take a complete reset of society. It's going to be a reset of the world, really. Um, yeah. It, it, it's it, it's going to be it, I mean I probably won't be alive to see it but to, just thinking about it it's going to be interesting um, but yes definitely a, a world where you know everybody is legitimately equal like I mean you I mean 
there's I feel like human beings are always going to want to be, you know, better. I guess people are always gonna want to always gonna want to be above somebody. Yeah. Or whatever. And you know, whether it be like money or like status or whatever. But like the pigmentation in somebody's skin should not be a uh uh of uh, like a variable in you wanting to be somewhere in some hierarchy like every like it should be the playing field should be equal or, or not even equal like the playing field should be equitable like it the, like the playing field is not equitable right like we, we we have some equality in there but there needs to be equity um and i feel like you gotta, you gotta have both you can't you can't just have one you gotta have both um and i feel like like when i look um like when like even like right now like thinking about like the civil rights movement like i don't know if they were pushing for equity um because all i've ever all i ever heard was like equal rights but like equal and equitable rights is what it needs to be because when when there's equity that means the playing that no matter like where you're at on the playing field or whatever like um there's this uh this is picture uh it's like a side-by-side deal um and it has equality and equity and equality is like, yeah, everybody, like everybody's, I guess like everybody's footing may be like the same, but like not everybody can, like, it's like they're looking at a baseball game. Not, but, but with equality, not everybody can see the baseball game. Like the, like the, uh, the, the fence is still, you know, too high. Like one person, mm, yeah. maybe two people can see it. Um, but with equity, like, yeah, no matter where you're at or whatever, you can still see the game. Yeah, that's, uh, that, I, mean, I think that's one way to understand it. Yeah. There needs to be so there needs to be equality and equity in wrestling. There needs to be equality and equity in just, just everything. Like every, like everybody, everybody, deserve, everybody within reason deserves a shot to do. You know, with with wrestling, deserves a shot to do something that they love to fucking do. And you shouldn't be, in wrestling. You shouldn't be held back by any by anything because somebody has somebody has some weird take or somebody has some like weird ideology like take that shit on somewhere dog but i mean with i mean professional wrestling has been like one of the, like the, the most like progressive uh uh i guess like forms of entertainment yeah um and like i think i don't know what rest i really don't know what the independents were like like before the speaking out movement um because I was still like wet behind the ears as far as that goes, mm-hmm. but like I, I feel like after that, I, I feel like the speaking up movement kind of cleaned up the independents, got all got most of all of the garbage people out. Yep. Um, and I really, really like where wrestling is, and like I've heard vets say, I wish wrestling would go back the way it was like 15 years ago. And I don't know what wrestling was like 15 years ago, but uh, I can imagine that it wasn't great. Um, and I feel like now, like um there's just more camaraderie there's more um like there's more people getting chances um like more people being seen um and i think it's beautiful it's it's fucking amazing i've heard a lot about the uh camaraderie with black wrestlers yeah. uh, uh maybe it is being able to share like some of the same experiences and everything and uh, i think it was jocelyn that put it like being on some of those shows where you know it's maybe a locker room full of black people black wrestlers and it's just like yeah like we it's it's like a i think she might have said like a reunion or something like even if you'd never yeah. like officially met it's just something that uh you connect with and it's it's uh it's so easy for them I, I haven't i have yet to be on one of those all black shows and i hope that this year is the year that i do get to do it or maybe even next year um but like yeah like we're all no matter what we're all connected um, no matter like what you believe, no matter if you, if you, even if you think we're not all connected, we're all connected, um, in, in one way or another. And, you know, when it's just all of us together, like even sometimes when I'd be on Twitter and I see like the spaces and it's just like not black people in there or whatever, like that, those spaces are different from other spaces. Um, just the vibe is different. The conversations are different. Um, you know, um, the discourse in those, you know, spaces is different. Um, I've, um, and I would like to, and I guess in a physical aspect, I would like to be a part of, you know, more all black shows. Um, yeah. That's what I would like in 2022. I like, this. I, I remember I put out the post like earlier, like I think earlier this year or 
like going into the year, like I would like to wrestle more black talent. And like, I think I need to repost that because like I, that that's what I want this year. Like yeah. I want to have as many matches with as many diff, many black talent. I don't care what the style is. Um, the match style, I'm not doing any death matches, but you know, anything, <laughs> but anything else like outside of that, like definitely like, um, I just want to put on bangers with people who look like me and have fun. I mean, also wrestle everybody else, but you know, you have to say that for certain people because there were a few people that commented and they're like, "Oh, what do you? What about everybody else?" I'm like, "What about everybody else? I'm I'm definitely gonna wrestle everybody else. That's, <laughs> that's definitely gonna happen." Yeah, but if, but I have to make this known. That this is what I want. I know there's a there's a show. Well, when this comes out, it'll be February, so like it'll be this month later later on this month that I plan on going to is uh, the Ohio Wrestling Alliance, like their uh, Good Trouble shows. Like I, mm-hmm. I love those, and this is the first one that I've been able to go to in like the lineup. I mean, granted, like I don't know, I would say probably like half of the wrestlers, but this is going to be like an introduction. But there's still like the other half of like people that I've just rooted for, uh, whether it be Jocelyn, whether it be Broner, uh, main event. Uh, actually, I think well, AC Mac will be there. I've, I've got to remember can't remember if don't die miles is going to be there he's that if i he's there that'll be the first time i've seen him live and i'm i'm definitely looking forward to that but like that's I, that's one show that like when i hear people talk about the all black shows like they no one talks about that like me the main two i know the main two are black wrestlers matter which is awesome and then obviously for the culture mm-hmm. yeah that's like I, I might have a tweet drafted that i'm going to eventually tweet out about how i want to see you on a uh, good trouble show because i know you've wrestled so no, no, you've wrestled columbus right yeah yeah i wrestled in columbus they paradigm it was uh paradigm owa it was like a joint show mm-hmm. over, yep. and I, I wrestled i guess i wrestled on an owa card yeah uh but yes i would definitely like to be out there more and wrestle there more yeah so that's i mean well if you if you're if you could travel to that show like there's no reason why they can't try to book you for another one i mean that's just me putting my, my wish out there and i do know because i didn't i didn't realize this match has happened i think it it was on that card or it was definitely a a paradigm card i think it, it might have been just a regular paradigm card i need to see in person you versus broner yeah that happened at paradigm it was uh damn what show was it was that a heavy hitter show yeah, it was a heavy hitter show um because we had been building it from the uh, one of the tapings that we had, and we finally wrestled. It's, I, I, I don't know if it, it wasn't for the heavy. It wasn't. I think it was for the heavy hitters, but it was a heavy hitters like, I guess, like qualifying match or something yeah. like that. But yeah, we wrestled. It was. I would. I. It was like a UWFI style match. I. I. I want to wrestle Broner in like a regular like wrestling match. Oh God, um, that'd be awesome. Yeah, that'd be it'd be fireworks. Um, UWFIs. There's only so much you can do. Yeah, that's a that's a dude that has slowly blown up in this area by literally punching a few people. Like one of them, Man, one he, of them filthy. I, I want I I want him in the Boomerang Fight Club. The more people like pitch it, and like the more that I think about it, I feel like it would be cool. Because like I guess like my vision for it is like I want to have somebody from like every style. And I know I think I believe i've talked about he has a boxing background um, i want to have somebody in like every style and like i definitely want to have like so i can dominate every division like i don't want mm-hmm. the boomerang fight club to just be oh uh this this just launches me like once like once i get to where like i know i'm going to be or whatever as far as like star star status um like i want to bring other people in and like just like launch other people like and i i, I don't want it to just be oh this happened and now it's gone like i, I would like for it to be like, like kind of like um like shane taylor promotions except i'm not going to turn it into an llc um but like <laughs> something like that like like stp is fucking amazing um i really hope that they uh that somebody picks them up and signs them this it's needed yeah they're, 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 they're needed they're definitely needed O'Shea should have been, O'Shea should have been on somebody's national TV product. Like, I mean, he's on, he was was on ROH. Yeah. Um, like he, he, like, 
I don't know what AEW. I don't know what AEW or WWE is doing, but uh, he's like again. He's the O'Shea Edwards is a total fucking package. Mm-hmm. He's got the size. He's he knows who he is as a character. He's great at fucking promos. Um, and the man can wrestle. I've, I'm, he can wrestle just about any style that I've seen. I don't think he's done like anything like like super stupid, but yeah. like he's like the, he's he's O'Shea Edwards is a total package. Um, fucking. Uh, I love, like, I love Khan. Khan, Khan just, to me, like, I've, I'm slowly, like, getting into, like, watching his work, but, like, just, like, looking at Khan, like, you can see, like, there's there's so much money to be made here. He just looks dope as fuck. I think I've told him that. Because I kind of feel like it's kind of weird to tell people that they look dope or whatever, but then I'm like, people like people like compliments. So I told him he looks dope. Um, I haven't seen two, I'm going to start watching more of Moses. Um, Shane Taylor, again, total fucking package. He knows who the fuck he is. I like his look. I don't give a fuck what anybody fucking says. Um, great fucking promo. And he can, I mean, his his style makes sense. He's going to punch you in the mouth. The fuck? He's going to beat your ass. Um, I've had I've had an exchange with him on Twitter. And he's very, very good at the uh, responses. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but like, I'm just like, he's just, he's just such a great dude. Like, and I feel this, I don't, I don't, I don't know what's, I don't know what's not clicking. I don't know what's not clicking, Steven. No, I don't know what's clicking. That's not clicking. That is, there's so much money to may, be made with Shane Taylor Promotions. Um, but yeah, that's like, that's what I would want the Boomay Fight Club to, you know, be like eventually or similar or in that same wheelhouse or have that same longevity. <sighs> One thing that I love about you, and it has to do with uh, O'Shea, like I love O'Shea. Uh, mm-hmm. I mentioned before we officially started recording, like how like I got introduced to AC Mack, and it was because like his uh, his feud with Brett Eisen, and like to me, Brett Eisen versus O'Shea, like the story that they told Southern Ring Pro was amazing. Of being like in a way partners, and then as soon as Brett got the title, he was like, "Fuck you, I don't need you." And like the story that they were telling, like I thought like this was going to be a big big deal for uh, O'Shea but going back to you is like when you guys had that match and he well when you won and then he, he gave you one of his necklaces or I don't know the exact name mm-hmm. of them but like when Jeez. I see you wear that to me like that's a callback that like not everybody's gonna get and I love it man that uh I tell O'Shea even to this day like thank you for making me because like that like I mean, I was I was building momentum for myself, but I feel like that match, like, really, like, like I don't know if I, it solidified me for me. Um, that match was uh, it was more emotional for me than I thought it was going to be. Um, but for me, like with O'Shea, O'Shea's like a he's like a brother, but then also like he O'Shea's fa- O'Shea will always be family. To me. Um, uh, when I when I when I did the feature showcase. Uh, with SCI, um, he was there. They were because they had like a they had they were doing like a I think they did like TWE also that that day, um, and like he was like so he he answered like I'd never I I've I did never met O'Shea like before then or whatever, but he was like he looked like he like we, we our looks are similar. Um, he's just taller than me and also more massive than me. But um, how I look now when I wrestle is credited to O'Shea. Cause he kind of like, like opened my eyes to like, you know, how my gear should look like how, even down to how I should take my hands and my wrist. Like he put, he, he planted those seeds in me. Um, and he made me look at like my work differently. Um, so again, thank you O'Shea for uh, helping make Alex Kane who he is today. Yeah. O'Shea is, the, he's the fucking man. Uh, I first met him before Southern Underground Pro Show and we had, been in communication i was going to do an interview with him uh, right right before the show and like we both like pulled up right around the same time and we just hit it off and like literally i think even during the interview like there was like things that we kind of like agreed on and similar interest and takes so that or was like yeah this dude's fucking awesome and he, he's another dude i want to see so many more places so when he eventually you know did you know get on ring of honor i was like oh my god like you know this is going to be huge and unfortunately, you know, we, we get what we got, but he's, I, he's somebody that I want to see, uh, succeed so much. Man, I'm about to put up that tweet later. 
<laughs> I need I need O'Shea Edwards on my screen every week, dog. Like, what are what what are we doing here? Oh, what are we doing here? The, the this like the promos he does now are fucking amazing. Imagine having like the production that like a, a WWE or AEW has, or hell, mm-hmm. even like an MOW or like Impact like has like boy, license to print money. Mm-hmm. License to print money. Man. All right, uh, let's start to wrap this up and let's get into the Fave Five Questions. Hey, this is Booker T, right. five-time champ, and this is the Fave Five Questions. Now, can you dig it? All right. Okay. Yep, that's uh, that's actually Booker T. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, question number one. Let's go with favorite video game console. Console? Uh, I'm an Xbox uh, person. Um, well, Xbox and PlayStation, but out of the two, my Xbox One is my fave of all time. Of all, yes, of all time. Well, of all time. Oh, then yeah, of all of all time, PlayStation Two. Okay. Yeah, oh, yeah, of all time, PlayStation Two. Yeah, that's 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 a big one for a lot of people. For me, it's it's just where I grew up. It's Super Nintendo. Like I am so nostalgic for that system, and whenever I get a chance to like play something on it or play even just a. a a ROM or whatever of one of the games. Like I, I just love it. All right. Question number two. I think I know what, where you're going to go here, but let's go with favorite cereal. Oh, uh, my favorite cereal. Cinnamon toast crunch. Okay. Say it. Uh, well, I guess, uh, I mean, apple juice is my favorite thing to put in the cinnamon toast crunch. <laughs> it's, all, it's definitely going to be milk. Um, but uh, the cinnamon toast crunch and apple juice is fucking good. It's it's one of those things I need to try. Anytime like I've mentioned that to people, like the, the initial reaction is like, oh my god, that's gross. But that, even that was mine because you just think cereal and juice, like mm-hmm. not specifying on what juice it is, not specifying on what cereal it is. It just go, oh, that's gross. But when you take it one step further and you go cinnamon toast crunch and apple juice. Cinnamon and apple, yeah, that that goes together. You don't cinnamon think it does? Always goes together. Yeah, Hell, fucking cinnamon toast crunch. They came out with a uh, with an apple uh, with a uh, with an apple cinnamon toast crunch flavor. Oh yeah, limited edition, and they, they didn't give me my props, but it's all good though. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, I think I did get a box of that, and it it was pretty good. So I need I need to try cinnamon toast crunch and apple juice because I have my weird combinations, and even that's not even necessarily that weird like uh i've mentioned it here on the podcast before it got a crazy reaction from steps little sarah but uh growing up when i was in elementary school i would dip my pizza in applesauce because like they they were, came on the same day and actually they they kind of go together i must have tried that it's it's not bad and i think like after i had that conversation with her which was like a couple years ago like that weekend i was like man i'm now i want i'm gonna order pizza and i'm gonna get some apple sauce and I'm going to dip it in. It's to me, it's still good. People are like, Oh, it's disgusting. Man, Try I've, it. I've, I've, man. I think uh, now that I think about it, I've always done like weird food combinations. Like I think for, a, for, I think one day at lunch, like I think I mixed my strawberry, my strawberry milk and orange juice for some reason. It tasted good to me, but like, now that I think about it, that's weird dog. I've yeah, I've always been a little, a little, a little weird. Like I've seen people on TikTok, like uh, fuck, I think it was Lizzo. She put like mustard on a fucking Oreo. Oh, I've seen that. I think I saw hers, but I also like it's one of one of those. Or no, was it a uh, watermelon? Uh, I, people have done both. Okay, people have done both. Yeah, because I know that that's one of those other weird combinations where it's like you think like, oh, this is gonna be disgusting, but then when, like people try it, the reaction is like, oh my god, like this is really good. I didn't even think about that. I think our friend McRuber just had one. Was it uh? Oh yeah, sour cream and pizza. Interesting. I think that's when I threw it. That's when I threw the applesauce and pizza idea because I'm like, well, if you're gonna try that, try try my I idea. Try this. Yeah. I, try that. I like sour cream. Uh, question number three. Let's go with okay. I don't use this one that often, but what is your ideal peanut butter and jelly sandwich? What's the bread? What's the peanut butter? What's the jelly? And like even oh. down to like uh, brand. Okay. Um, uh, what is it? Uh, like Texas toast bread. 
Okay. Um, what, is it Sunbeam? I think um, Texas Toast Bread, um, not toasted because why? Uh, Texas Toast Bread, um, Jif peanut butter, um, smooth or crunchy? Like smooth. Okay. Um, smooth. Uh, like at least like four slices of bread, like but all one sandwich. Um, like two. What is it? The serving size is like two tablespoons, so like two servings of peanut butter on each slice. Um, I don't like one, like a ser- like the, just a serving of jelly on each. I don't really care for the jelly. I don't care. Um, <laughs> um, it's just there uh, to add just like a little bit more sweetness to it. Um, definitely keeping the crust um, with, a, with like a nice glass of milk, either regular milk or like chocolate milk and smushed. Smushed down together. <laughs> oh my god! The only the only benefit of toasting a PB and J or toasting the bread before the PB and J is it does make the jelly a little bit easier to spread. That's pretty much it. Yeah, like I've had it; it's not terrible. But like when I think peanut butter jelly, I think untoasted. Man, I love a good PB and J. Exactly. I think like PB and J is like the universal sandwich. Like e- like everybody grew up eating it one way or another and i I don't think i've ever met anybody or at least i can't remember many that are like i don't like peanut butter and jellies man if i ever meet somebody who doesn't like pb and j uh we can't be friends i'm gonna let you know that right now <laughs> if you don't like pb and j we can't be friends like you may like you may have like different dietary like restrictions now as an adult because everybody's on some weird diet nowadays but uh, if you at one point, you know, if you at no point in your life ever ate and liked the PB and J sandwich, we can't be friends. Non-negotiable. We can't be friends. <laughs> Just like people who don't know who John Cena is, we can't be friends. You, you are. Uh, you obviously have gr- grown up in a sheltered life, and that is scary. And I can't have that in my. Uh, I can't have that in my life. Or maybe you're under the age of four. Okay, well, I don't want to be friends with a with with, a, with somebody else's kid either. Like the only the only uh, young young people that I that I even fuck with are my nieces and nephews, <laughs> and I don't even like them all the time. Uh, all right, question number four. Uh, I just came up with this one today, okay. and, and I think it's it's really interesting. Everybody's probably going to have obviously their own, uh, and I don't I don't think I've ever heard anybody really ask this question. It's, it's a little private, but uh, what deodorant do you use? What deodorant? Yeah. And I use Old Spice and then I'm between Old Spice, Pure Sport, high high endurance because it's like it's antiperspirant and it's deodorant. And then sometimes I use uh, Degree Men, the 48-hour antiperspirant Cool Rush. Um, I, the, I always use the, the white solid um, because I've learned over – I learned over the years that um, the uh, the gel kind like like burns my armpits. Okay, but there's like something in it that like my body is not fucking with my. And if I do end up using it like in like a crunch, like I know my pits are gonna be on fire. I it's like a chemical burn. I'm a, I'm definitely a gel like the the blue gel because I actually I'm weird. It's something I thought of recently. Is I do I actually switch between four different old spice scents one is oddly enough pure sport uh, another one is fresh and fresh for me has like the most nostalgia to it because like when we were in fifth grade and we had our like little uh puberty class or whatever where they actually they divided up into boys and girls and like you get like your little i don't want to say a goodie bag but like you get some like puberty related things and like for mm-hmm. for boys you got a a uh, fresh old spice scent uh deodorant so like i started wearing that recently for the first time in a while and like just still smells good and just brings me so much nostalgia but anyway uh there's those two and then there's swagger which i've loved since they've introduced it and uh bear glove and i like switching in between them because then i feel like i can smell the deodorant a little bit more and i, and I like the smell of like all the deodorant thought about switching through i might i might get some more scents some different scents other than pure sport i'd buy pure sport because it's at the store uh, when i re-up on deodorant but i never never thought about it like that can i borrow that question for twitter <laughs> go ahead hell yeah i think it's a it's a it's one of those great questions that nobody thinks about because i don't know like we don't necessarily think about deodorant. you grab it you throw it on and you go with your 
go throughout your day, but like, obviously if you go down the deodorant aisle, there's, you know, there's a bunch of different ones and somebody's buying all of them. And it's kind of like crazy to hear where people are coming from. Like I said, for me, I got the four, uh, actually right now in my house, I have eight sticks of deodorant, uh, the four that came in two packs. So I still have like four that are on my shelf that I'm not using. And then I have like two, oddly enough, spare swagger sticks that I've had to use for like other things that like maybe I forgot or maybe I left it in a bag and totally forgot about it. So yeah, that's when I hear those uh, horrible stereotypes of like, oh, wrestling fans stink. I'm like, fuck you. I have (laughs) 10 sticks of deodorant at home and I put them on like three times a day. As crazy as that sounds, but I I did hear. Well, supposedly like it works the best when you put it on before you go to bed. I used to do that. I used to do that. I do that. I do uh, after I get out of the shower. And then I swear, like after drying and everything, like my pit feels like really feels really weird. So like Mm -hmm. when I go to bed, I put a little bit more on. And then like when I wake up, there's just like a habit of just touching up the scent maybe. (laughs) But uh, it's got to touch it up. Yep. Don't want to stink throughout the day. But then they, I don't, I don't touch it again until nighttime. All right, let's go. uh, Question number five. Well, let's go with uh, the question that I have titled the Jocelyn Navarro question. Tacos or burritos? Um, okay. Um, it depends on, it depends. Uh, like I recently went to Mexico, um, uh, for some W in the crash, uh, Mexican taco, like authentic Mexican tacos, gold, like pure gold. Um, but uh, if I can't have those, then it's burritos. Because um, there's, you really, you can't mess up a burrito. You can mess up a taco. You can mess up a taco, but you can't fuck up a burrito. Unless you put too many, like, beans in it. Like, refried beans. It's, yeah. But, like, 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 whole beans in there. It's great. I need, I need to have, like, an authentic Mexican taco. I've, I've had like some, you know, like streetcar tacos. I've had like, there's like some authentic Mexican restaurants around here. And I kind of question how, I don't want to say how authentic is because it it seems like it's authentic, but like, am I getting a little bit more of like, we're going to turn this into a, a restaurant dish type serving or like, like, I don't know what the difference is basically. So I would love to figure it out. I think I, when I was down in like, phoenix when i was like 10 we went to a mexican restaurant i don't remember how it was but i, I felt like that was we're like that close to mexico so maybe it was authentic mm-hmm. i don't know i do have i recently reunited uh or i not reunited i found my half sister and she she has mexican descent so i know when well, i go I think out I, saw, I think i saw you doing that on tiktok i think it was, was it tiktok i think it was TikTok. yeah I, I, I talked about it. i didn't go into a lot of details because well uh, well you saw probably the friends only one where i go into a little bit mm-hmm. more just of like there's certain details i can't talk about so i'm not going to talk about them here but it's basically yeah like she has she does have this uh mexican uh part of her so i know when i go down there or go go out there out to california eventually hopefully this year uh i i hope that i can get something like real authentic yeah that's oh my god like i i think yeah, after after I ate that there, like I think I had like three or four of them. Like I came, like I bought like the the what is it, the corn tortillas? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the corn tortillas or whatever. I tried to make it myself. Uh, it was not the same at all, at all. But uh, yeah, your boy was obsessed for a minute. <sighs> I need to go back to Mexico. <laughs> all right, uh, question number six that I. I normally tailor around my guest uh, for you. Let's go with what promotions would you like to debut at like this year? Oh man. I had them written down. Uh, I guess off the top of my head, um, C4 in Canada, um, new Texas pro. Oh man. Um, man, I wish, I wish I could find that list. Uh, Warrior wrestling. Uh, Fight Club, Fight Club Pro, um, Deadlock Pro. Who else? Who else? Who else? Beyond and Limitless. Even though Beyond isn't uh, isn't too happy with this, <laughs> with the uh, the Southeast First movement. Um, I still want to wrestle there. Um, it would, be, you know what? Um, one day I'm gonna wrestle for PWG. Russell PWG one of these days. 
maybe even, maybe even the uh, in the Battle of Los Angeles. So that'd be dope as fuck. Um, uh, yeah, that's all. I, I guess that's all. I, that's all that comes to mind right now. Damn. I think Beyond would be a cool one, especially with, like you said, everything going on right now. Like let, like let's see, like a lot of Southern wrestlers invade the Northeast. Oh my god! There's, like it's like it could almost be like some Civil War type shit, but it's like like a cool, like a better, like a, like a civil, <laughs> like a civil war for like better reasons. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why I said Northeast and not in the North because I was like, mm, let's steer away from. <laughs> You're away from the Civil War shit, but yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I I'm for uh, Southern wrestlers coming up more and more, like especially with you know following Southern Underground Pro and everything. And I think a lot of Southern wrestlers could be really awesome. Like for example, which I don't I don't know if you were around much for him. There was a wrestler in Grand. He was in Kentucky, which not 100 percent South, but I feel like not 100 percent North either. But his name was Teddy King and basically I would describe him. He was the jock version of MJF, even to the point of, I saw them have a match. Uh, yeah. I think I know you're talking. Yeah. He was good. He was so fucking good, but he didn't necessarily get the same attention like as MJF did. And then, you know, as uh, far as I understand, got married, had a kid. And I think he might've had like a couple matches over the past year and a half or so but Mm -hmm. like there has been like i'm coming back fully but he was a dude that i would love to have seen more places but unfortunately just it didn't happen aew is another one i'd like to debut uh yeah there's there's a there's a lot there's definitely a lot that i would like to debut at um but it's gotta gotta keep on the gotta keep on the yield grind yeah um and uh wake people up to the suplex assassin I already mentioned, like, I want to see you versus Broner, and I know I put it on Twitter at one point. I want to see you versus uh, Jackson Stone. Assassin versus Shogun needs to happen. Like, that's, to me, that's a main event match, and I don't know, necessarily know who would win, but I would love it. Yeah, I want the match would be interesting. It would, it would definitely be a, a test for me, because I, I think he's bigger than me. Uh, it would definitely be. I like matches like that, where yeah. it's like, oh, can Alex King suplex him? Yes, but you know, let's let's build let's let's build this drama. Let's see if I can. <laughs> might get it. You might get it sooner rather than later. Fingers crossed. I want, like I said, I want that. I want you versus Broner, uh, in an actual match, preferably somewhere I could drive to. Mm-hmm. I mean, granted, I could drive everywhere, but within reason. Some places, some people, some places are easier than others. I want to wrestle Davy Richards, and I want to wrestle Josh Alexander, and I hope that I get both of those matches this year. Davy may or may not happen because you know today both of them. <laughs> it may not happen today, but you know, but yeah. I mean, I wrestled. I've already wrestled Hammerstone, and then like so, like I wrestled him at PCW Ultra. Yeah. So if I can wrestle Hammerstone, if I can wrestle the world champion, I can wrestle anybody else in this goddamn on the damn roster. I want to wrestle Jacob Fatu. I got. We were in like a fatal four ways at some show in Georgia, at the show called All Star Wrestling in Georgia, and like we didn't like we didn't touch much. We like we had like a, like a strike off in the match or whatever, but like we didn't bump each other. But like it's even the interaction, like I just know the match that we would have would be would be awesome. Um, uh, I want to wrestle Daniel Garcia one on one again. We were in a fatal four way match, and we like, we we I mean we got we got to it. Um, we got to it definitely, but uh, that's uh the scenic city invitational night too. That was fun. Um, and then I want to wrestle Lee Moriarty because you know everybody needs to test their uh their technical acumen against the best wrestler in North America. Um, man, there's so many people I need to wrestle. So much time. There's still so many like main event caliber matches that I can have, but my is out here with the bullshit. <laughs> all right man any uh final thoughts or last minute plugs before we go follow me on twitter at uh alex underscore kane 11 um uh follow me on tiktok at the real alex kane no one i believe no oh throwing bodies no follow <laughs> me at tiktok at throwing bodies sorry i'll be changing my names and not and not uh and not remembering it uh throwing bodies um 
Uh, Instagram is a real Alex Kane one, I believe. Type in Alex Kane, you'll see me. God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the only cool Alex Kane out here. Um, if you're a promoter, you can find me on Facebook. Um, you can add me, uh, and be, or we can we can talk business. Also, if you're a promoter, listen to this. Uh, Alex Kane Bookings at gmail dot com. Uh, you know, we can uh, we can do some business. I've I've a reasonable rate. Um, yeah, th- those are my plugs. Um, actually, no. Uh, uh, buy my merchandise on brainbustertees.com dot com and mowshop.com. dot com. There's a there's a really nice shirt on there that I, that I came up with. It's called Crybaby Calvin. Um, it's cry. It's Calvin Tankman as a baby crying, um, and then he has like hustle bustle on his mouthpiece. The cutest thing ever. Go buy that. Uh, put money in my pockets. My pockets. Those are my plugs. And watch MLW. And watch MLW. But you know, if you if you're following me on social media, you see that every you see that almost every other day. But watch MLW. We out here. We the best. And, of course, you can find myself at jsummers330 on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram, much like you can find the show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Facebook.com slash wrestling cheers, Twitter.com slash wrestling cheers, and Instagram.com slash wrestling cheers. Email, if you so choose to desire, wrestling cheers at gmail.com. And we have the merch store over at whatamaneuver.net. Like I said earlier in this episode, please rate, review, and subscribe. You're able to listen to this fine podcast, whether it be Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, YouTube, Spotify iHeartRadio, Pandora, Amazon Music, or Podbean, WrestlingCheers.Podbean.com. Check out our friends on the Trending Topics Network, such as All Beer Inside, Eurovision Showcase, Spanish Announce Table, and Wrestling with Altitude. Check out our other podcast friends, such as Pod Van Dam, Super Fantastic Podcast, It's Evolution Baby, The Indie Cast, Sobros Network, Biff Radio, Game Marks Podcast, Powerbomb Jutsu, Spotlight Series, Fully Posable, Doing the Favor, Positively Pro Wrestling, IWTV Guide, If You Catch My Grift, At Odds With Wrestling, Best in the World Podcast, Marks With Mics, This Ends at Prom, and Porch Talk. Check out our other non-podcasting friends such as Thrift Store Jobber, The Savage Dash, The Mystery Men, Redline Radio, Mouse's Wrestling Adventure, VHS Party Tonight on Instagram, Good Company, Heart of Gold, Toy Hiya Toy Show, Time Capsule Toys, Stay Tough, Smoke and Jay's Barbecue, and be sure to use the 10% off code when you order of Cheers so you can save yourself a little money. Russell Void, Midwest Territory, Southern Underground Pro, and the official graphic designer of Wrestling Cheers, Moy Boy Designs. That will do it for us here on Wrestling Cheers, where everybody knows your name, especially when you're from Suplex Island. Later. It's the wrestling cheers. Get up on your feet. Praying in your day in the middle of the week. And you gotta love the show. Yeah, you know it holds a title for the best podcast. Talking wrestling in Ohio. Finishing a cold one. Take a load off. We ain't all about the prohibition like Josh. So we cheers. And then we sit back, other shows are in the trash, kinda like they Nick Stapp, like the name is Matt Justice, wearing all the gold, wrestling cheers is coming to a close, the number one podcast going in the game, and one day everybody's gonna know the name, it's the wrestling cheers, this is Platinum Max, signing off, Ohio, Good night. the world, Good night. we love you, we'll see you next week.